Step three to becoming a master communicator is being a complete listener. Listening not just to respond, but to hear. We are so accustomed to task switching all day long, going from text messaging to 10 tabs open on our computer to ordering lunch to telling our mom that we need this, that our brains have begun to speed up. And because of that, our focus has decreased. I'm sure we can all feel that. When we're in a conversation, sometimes it's like a struggle to even pay attention. You're like, there's 10 other conversations going on in my head, right? So when we practice being a complete listener, we allow ourselves to slow down and invoke this two-way gift. When you are a complete listener, you give the person who is speaking the gift of having an open platform to be heard, and you yourself gain the gift of learning something new, gaining a new perspective, or realizing we're more alike than we are different. We can all turn on the news any day at any moment and observe a whole bunch of people talking at each other, talking over each other, but not talking with each other. It's easy to be attached to whatever our labels are, whatever religion you are, whatever political party you are, and listening from that standpoint, just being on guard, waiting for them to disagree, and be like, oh, I know better. Wait till I say my part. And that's why we jump in to speak without ever listening to hear. And we are doing ourselves and our relationships such a disservice by doing that. So a few quick ways to be a complete listener. Number one, as we started today, grounding ourselves. When we're in a conversation, whether we're standing or sitting, feel like you are a tree rooted in the ground. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your butt in the chair. And take big, deep belly breaths. When we are in a state of anxiety or we're moving quickly, we breathe up here, right? Oh my God, I got to get to class. Oh my gosh, she's texting me. I need to answer her email. And we shallow breathe. And that makes our minds quicken, quicken, and it's hard to listen. But when we take these big, deep belly breaths, it calms down our nervous system and allows us to open our minds to hear. The next step, eliminate distractions. What? You mean put my phone out of sight when I'm speaking with someone face to face? No. Yes. Unless it's absolutely necessary that you need your phone there, I encourage you to put it away. A study was done called the iPhone effect that looked at two people in a conversation when there was a phone present. Neither person picked up the phone Neither person addressed the phone, but the quality of the conversation was still proven to be less and the phone was still a distraction. So do yourself and your relationships a favor and give yourself the capacity to be distraction proof by putting the phone away. And when you're communicating virtually on Zoom or in any other form, I know it's tempting. I know you feel like they can't tell that I have 10 tabs open and I'm shoe shopping while they're talking. They can't tell. But trust me, as someone who, who coaches entrepreneurs, business professionals to get on camera with confidence and connect through that screen, we can feel when you are not giving us your undivided attention. So close out the tabs, shoe shop later, and even while you're communicating virtually, put your phone out of sight. As you're sitting there grounding yourself, taking those deep belly breaths, listen for commonalities. What do I mean by that? I mean when someone's speaking to you and they're talking about where they're from. Oh my goodness, you're from Linden, New Jersey? So am I. Boom, a connection's made. And as you spend your beautiful time here at Wagner and you're getting ready to emerge into the real world. This is your time to practice creating those genuine connections because that is what brings you to the next level of your success. 
People don't do business with companies. People do business with people. Simon Sinek said this for a reason. Because even if you are the smartest in the class, you graduate valedictorian, if you do not have the capacity to create genuine connections with people through communication, you still may not be the one to get the job. So start practicing this now. You're gonna be going on job interviews. You may be the one interviewing. So if you start to develop this capacity to be a complete listener now, boy, oh boy, will you be ahead of the game. And lastly, after you catch those commonalities and repeat them back, oh my goodness, you're from Linden, me too. Wait, so what street did you grow up on? Boom, now there's, there's rapport being created. And everyone's, everyone's stress level kind of goes down and you feel more casual and you're able to open up. It's like an icebreaker. Then when you go to speak, after that person is done speaking, when we take a second, the power of the pause, we allow ourselves to absorb what we just heard. See, what I have noticed as a communication coach is that so many of us are afraid of silence, right? Anybody else? Anybody afraid of silence? When you're, yeah, right? When you're in a conversation, you're like, Oh my God, there's a moment of silence. And then what happens? You fill it with filler words. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, yeah. And, um, like, like, um, yeah. And, and then you're like, why am I, why am I using so many filler words? It's because we're afraid of silence. And the truth is silence is beautiful and natural because when you are completely listening to someone and they stop speaking, That's so interesting you just said that because I was just having this conversation with someone. You need that moment to register. So don't be afraid of the silence, embrace it. And the more you become comfortable with that silence, the more eloquent you become in your speech because then you're not feeling all over the place. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. So step three, be a complete listener. As I shared with you, when I was on that film set, yes, it was amazing to be starring in my first lead role in a film. But what was more magical was having these moments of listening to a legend share his life with me, share life lessons that I now have carried with me in my own life that have changed my life for the better. If I just sat there being like, okay, Renee, you're sitting across from Clint Eastwood. Pretend like, like, make sure you look really interested. And I'm having this second conversation. I would have missed all of these beautiful moments of connection and of learning. And he taught me things that I promise you have shifted me in such incredible ways. I wouldn't be who I am today without those lessons that came about from being a complete listener.